by a man's boots, by his trouser knee, by his cuffs, by his coat tails, by all of these things a man's calling is plainly revealed. Word spoken there by Sherlock Holmes, I believe, although it may have been Westlife. So in the next programme, I got to go out and put these Holmesian deductive techniques to the test and see how much I could tell about a person by their clothes and their manner. First thing is, you walk towards me, your posture is strong and solid. This is obviously a physical and control thing that you're involved in. Your handshake was solid. There's a kind of a thing you're kind of checking yeah. me out slightly, almost. <laughs> n- not suspicious, but you're checking me out. So I'm guessing you're in some kind of security job, is that right? <laughs> Before that, pay particular attention to a couple of moments in the first experiment with Colin, the moment that he takes his jacket off, and the positions of our fingers on the cell walls. And pay no attention to his unforgivable mispronunciation of my name at the start. This is now the last show of our mind control marathon, so I only hope to God that you went to bed some time ago and are now watching this the following day on some kind of electromagnetic image registration device. If not, you need to find maybe some form of narcotic or autoerotic stimulation to keep you awake for the next half hour, and then I shall leave you. So are you ready? Can you stomach the theme music one more time? Stand up, come over to your television screen. Do this now, so you're about three feet away from the screen. I'm going to show you a picture. Now look at the picture. There's something very wrong with the picture. Can you see what it is? When you see what it is, you'll be amazed. Look at it carefully. It's not the chair. What's wrong with it? The House of Detention was London's busiest prison until it closed in 1877. How did Hannibal Lecter talk his cell neighbour into swallowing his own tongue? It's an absorbing premise for those of us who grew up plotting to be a criminal mastermind. We placed an advertisement for people to help out in the show and one of the people who responded was Colin. You doing all right? It's not, not a very happy place, is it? It's okay. No. Let me show you the cell. It's just through here. Right, I'll show you what you've got in here. You've got a chair and a blackboard, and I'm going to introduce you to a two cameramen here. This is Louis. He will be your cameraman. He'll remain on you from now on. This is Jono. Jono's my cameraman. He will remain on me. Neither will cut away. Both will keep a continuous shot of each other, because I'm going to go in the cell next door. We'll be able to hear each other through the ventilation shafts, but we won't be able to see each other, all right? So thanks for helping us out. I'll see you in a minute. You see, there were many reports in those days of prisoners that said they'd become demonically possessed, whereas now we know what happened is that the isolation made them go schizophrenic, and that in that state they believed their every move to be controlled by some external force. Take a seat. Can you hear me, Colin? Yes, I can hear you, Darren. Good. So, Colin, are both your parents still alive? Yes, they still are. What do they do? Uh, They're both pensioners. So when you were young, did they ever get cross? Um, When you were naughty, did they get cross? If you maybe moved something you shouldn't have done, if you moved something you were naughty, did they get cross? Yes, they did. Yeah, did you move just then? Yes. What did you do? Move my head. Okay. So, do you think when they got cross that it affected you now? Do you get cross yourself now? Um, sometimes I do, yes. Right, did you move just then? Yes. What did you do? Cross my arms. Good. Sounds like you're very uh, close to your parents, which is very... Touching to hear. That's good. Did you move just then? No. Okay. 
I guess there was a time maybe when you're 18, 19, you start to sort of form your own life for yourself. You go back and see your parents. They still treat you a bit like a kid sometimes. That happens. I wonder if that made you uncomfortable. Sometimes. Or you felt so. yourself sliding back. Yeah, sometimes I did. Yeah, did you move then? Yes. What did you do? I uh, moved my legs. Okay. Colin, I want you to stand up. Go over to the blackboard, pick up a piece of chalk. Get the chalk, start wandering around the cell. Keep walking around. And at some point, I want you to go and put your forefinger on any point, on any wall of the cell. Do that whenever you're ready. Walk around and around, and then go put your finger somewhere on one of the walls. Do that now. Tell me when you're done. Say now when you've got it. Now. Now, right, go straight to the blackboard. Go straight to the blackboard and draw. Draw something, anything you like. Anything you like, draw it now. Whatever comes into your mind. Have you done that? Yes. Good, come out of the cell. How are you doing? Too bad. Come in here. Wow. How's it doing that? I can't believe it. When I walk through there, I'll see what I've drawn. Yeah, he's drawn the same. It's amazing. I can't believe it. <laughs> Jesus. Every day when you leave your home, you give away more than you could ever imagine about who you are and what you do. Do you know who I am, what I do? No. No, great, but I think I can tell you what you do for a living. Look at me, it's, uh, it's people, it's PR, it's marketing, it's that sort of thing. Yes. Is that what you do? Yes. You look for people's skills, you put them in positions. It's some sort of headhunting, is that right? Recruitment, yes. that yes. sort of thing? What do you do? Recruitment consultant. It's fashion, it's an assistant in a shop. This is a fashion, specifically denim, yeah? You're selling denim, you're selling jeans, is that right? You were doing that and you haven't done it for a while. It's you, you recently come out of that job, is that right? Yes. Absolutely is that right? right yeah. Fantastic. Oh my god! <laughs> Open your eyes. Take this guy, his walk, the gum chewing, the long coat, his confident, streetwise detached. He's protective of his girlfriend, so he's aware of the danger around him. His hair tells me he's not in the forces, so I'd say he's a journalist. Workmates. The woman on the left, she's wearing nighttime gear at lunchtime, but has conservative hair and makeup, so it's only a work outfit. The rose means she's gregarious, so these two work in the PR end of high street fashion. Guy here in the black, dead giveaway. Excuse me, sir, can I stop you for a second? I thought, no, I don't know you. Really. You do know me from Channel 4. Yes, yeah, mind reader. Jesus. Well, I've got no idea who you are, oh, but so, look yeah. at me, look yeah, at me. Looking... I think I can tell you what you do for a living. What's that? You, are you happy for me to tell people? Yeah, yeah. Alright, look at me. Look at me. First thing is, you walk towards me, your posture is strong and solid. This is obviously a physical and control thing that you're involved in. Your handshake was solid. There's a kind of a thing, you're kind of checking yeah. me out slightly, almost. <laughs> not suspicious, but you're checking me out. So I'm guessing you're in some kind of security job, is that right? <laughs> Regulation haircut, so you're not a bouncer. <laughs> so this is maybe something to do with uh, police or something like that. What, what do you do? What do you do, mate? What do you do? Work in a police station. <laughs> you work in a police station? Are you, you're, not, you're not a policeman, though, are you? It's not no, I'm basically... Security for yeah. the police. Mm -hmm. Alright, okay, now look, that's just okay. me reading your signals. What I want you to do, this is more interesting, is to think of what you would love to do if you weren't doing security for police uh -huh. at the moment. Don't say it, just think it. Okay. Alright? I'm going to get a bit physical here, but just go with me. Right? Right. Look at me and just think, now be there in your mind. Imagine yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. Imagine now that you're doing this job, whatever it is. Now, what right. is it? Alright, first thing is, this is aspirational. You're moving easily. This is aspirational because your energy is up here, not down there. Something that maybe you've seen and you would really love to be doing. Look at me, just keep your focus on me. Look at me. Alright, now you're in a cramped space doing this thing and you're sat down, so you're going to want to do something in a wide open space. Correct. Where you can maybe uh, move around and get out and big things. It's obviously going to be sport based. You're going to be sport type you're wearing now, but you're not having any sports in your job at the moment. It's a sport thing, wide open space. You're on your own. You're on your own doing the security job. It's a solitary job, so that's what you like. So it's a sport thing with a wide open space when you're on your own. It's golf, isn't it? It's golf. You want to do golf? Is it golf? What is it? What is it? What is it? Golf. European what? European tour, golf. You want to be a golfer? Yeah, is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, that's it. You got it. Well done. You're doing fantastic golf, mate. Take care of the day. Do, but...
The one inch punch is a martial arts technique of focusing your entire energy into the fist and then by punching from a very short distance you can knock your opponent flat. I found a Kung Fu grandmaster who can do it and invited him along to demonstrate it to a class of British students. Thank you. Thank you. Sit for Tam, an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you. You too. You are considered in Hong Kong to be the most sophisticated master of Wong Chong Kung Fu. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Tell me, this one inch punch, does it take a long time to learn? Is it difficult to learn? Yeah, it's taken me uh, one year. And you can put out a candle using this punch. Is this yes. true? I'd love to see this. Uh, That's outstanding. And you're going to try the same punch on Dennis here. You've volunteered to be hit. I will stand back. <laughs> what was that like? Quite painful. That was, uh, was very violent. Thank you very much. I yeah, want to show you something, something I do, which yeah. is similar, but it's non-physical. It's a little easier on the knuckles. Yeah. It just uses the mind. Could you choose a student for us to use here? Uh, this man. Guy on the end. What's your name? Archie. Archie, thank you for volunteering. Come stand here. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Stand, stand, stand. Look at me, breathe in. Out. Okay? It's just in your mind. Can we do this one more time? <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Alright. Okay. This time I will stand behind you, so you won't be able to see me. So you won't know when I'm doing it. Could you hold that for me? Thank you. Yeah. You can feel that? You can feel that? Yes? Yes. So this time I'm behind you so you can't see me. Oh! You all right? Stan, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Won't do any more, look at me, look at me. You all right? Yeah. It's just in your mind, you are okay now? Thank when you the punch much. landed, it just knocked me back. I couldn't see it, but I still felt it. And even though it was behind me, I didn't know what else to do. I just, I just felt that impact. It's quite shocking. Tell me the truth. After the break, I'll be trying to spot the lies of a used car salesman. It wasn't even one try or two tries, it was straight off and you straight away. And I'll be going to Walthamstow Stadium to try my luck at the dogs. Busty boy. Busty boy, you think we'll lose the next race? We'll lose, yeah. Alright. Walthamstow Stadium where hundreds of men, who all look like my dad, come to watch some thin dogs running around. I should point out that I don't do a lot of what you're about to see anymore. I used to, but it's not entirely fair. Number six has not won. No, it hasn't won. So you shouldn't get anything on this at all. No, it's worthless. This is worthless. Absolutely worthless. All right, one minute. I'll be straight back. Now, why are you looking at him? Where's he going? Surely he can't draw money. Don't believe it. I don't. How come? How? I don't believe it. Right. 
As much as that. Do you want to know how it's done? Yeah, tell me. That's just the start. That's only two quid. That's just the start. I'll show you how it works. Just follow me. Just follow me, okay. alright? Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your chest. Uh, put your hand on your wrist. Excellent. Now that's your elbow, not your wrist, alright? <laughs> but the point is, you follow what I say, you take my lead, alright? Okay. It's, it's just a control game, okay. alright? That's yeah. all I'm doing here, just at a much more advanced level, alright? Yeah. Now here's what I want you to do. We'll do a couple more races. Yeah. Each time, you bet on the dog you're sure is going to lose. Okay, no problem. Right? But as much as you like. Have you got a... Do you know which one's going to lose the next one? You got any ideas? Okay, yes. Alright. I'm looking at this. I Track two will lose. Clue. Track number two will lose. Yeah. How much are you going to put in it? Trust me on it, all right? Ten pounds. Go on. Ten quid? Yeah. Fantastic. Ten quid on number two. Right. To win, all right? To win. Right, let's go and collect our losings. You look her right in the eye, yeah. you've just got to trust me and don't be nervous about it, this will work. It will work because you'll believe that it will work. Okay. You look her right in the eye, yeah. you hand her the ticket, mm -hmm. and you say, this is the winning ticket, and you just believe that from the bottom of your soul. This is the winning ticket. This one's not winner. Not winner? This is the dog you're looking for. Try again, you may have misread it. Oh yeah, sorry, you have one, sorry. Fantastic. Good grief. Yeah. Can you come? Can you come for the next sorry, meeting? Yeah. 20, 20, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 100, 9 Thank sorry, you very much. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Is it legal? No, I have no idea. <laughs> Back at the House of Detention, I met a man who claimed he could beat a lie detector. After half an hour attached to it, he proved that he could. Never done it, never done it, never done it. Really, really, really wrong. Really wrong. Describe what you were like at school. school. Always going to get into trouble, trouble. trouble. getting kicked out of school. And that was a lie? That was my brother, yeah. You can beat, you can beat, beat, you can beat a polygraph. polygraph. I disconnected him from the machine to see if he could beat me. This is a polygraph or lie detector. To beat it, you'd need to be able to control your body temperature, your breathing rate, your pulse. To do that, you'd need to be a perfect and congenital liar, bordering on the sociopathic. Grant, that's you. Thanks for joining us. No problem. You're a used car salesman, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now, we've just spent about half an hour on this, and you can beat the polygraph. You want a few people that can do it. Well, I want to see how you fare against me. The difference, of course, between me and the machine is that machine cannot pick up on visual and auditory clues. And now that I've just said there are visual and auditory clues, you will, of course, find yourself making them. I will signal when I think you're lying using my Unitouch desktop audio generator, which is there. Okay. So, relax, get comfy. Don't feel at all self-conscious. <laughs> and uh, I'll ask you a couple of questions I know the answer to first. What's your Christian name? Grant. Very good. And uh, where are we at the moment? We're in the detention centre. Very good indeed. All right. So you can lie or tell the truth now to these questions. Okay. Grant, have you ever done anything really wrong? Yes. Good. What's the worst thing you've done? You can tell me. When I was uh, younger, I set a car alight. You set a car alight when you were young? Yeah, no. What's the worst thing you've done? Just tell me how old you were. There's something you're thinking of now, so quite specifically. How old are you? Sure. 25. 25, no. How old are you? 20. Yeah, okay. All right, 20 years old. What did you do? I stole a car. Bollocks. What did you do? Uh, I lied to somebody. Oh, that's good. No, that's true. You, you lied to someone. And, uh, all right, and who was it? Someone close to you? Someone close to me, yes. Yeah, who was it? Family? Yes. No. Who was it? Girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Okay. And where were you? Nah. Where were you? Where were you? Japan. Good. Okay. 
I believe you. All right. So look, here's what's happening. Now, you know when, when friends of yours, if you're in a pub and your mates are lying, you know when they're lying because you can feel it because you're in rapport with them. You are attuned to them. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm lining myself up with your ongoing physiological state. So here's the thing. I'm going to attach myself to the polygraph. The polygraph will now pick up on the changes in me. And because I have that attunement with you, because I'm so in line with you, my body will respond to your lies because I will actually feel you lying. Does that make sense? Okay. You turn me on, Grant? Okay. Grant, I'm going to ask you four times in a row what your mother's maiden name is. Okay. Each time you only think the answer, you say nothing out loud. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You think the correct answer three times, and you think a lie once. Yeah. When you lie, is up to you. Okay. So say nothing out loud. Grant. What's your mother's maiden name? Grant. What's your mother's maiden name? That's the lie. Was that the lie? Yes. Yeah. Is it something like, is it a muk something? That's or muk, correct. Muk, yes. muk, and then a short, like a, and then a muk, a muk, 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 Well done, Grant. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. You can relax now. Okay, thank you. He was able to guess what lies I was telling, when I was telling them. And, uh, he was able to guess what I was thinking, and which when, when I was thinking a lie. It's unbelievable that can someone tell so quickly. It wasn't even one try or two tries, it was straight off, he knew straight away. I can throw the card away now. You don't need it. Oh no, you've got, you got to pick the loser. I'll go pick the loser. Busty boy. Busty but boy, you think we'll lose the next race? We'll lose, yeah. Alright. Okay, how much are you going to put on this one? Well, should we put some more money on, or should we keep to our same stake, £10? We don't want to be greedy, because... 20 20 pound. 20 pound. Trap one. Thank you very much. So it's 20 quid to win. Trap one. Busty, Busty boy. boy. Alright. Busty, Busty boy came last. Yeah. Losing ticket. The losing ticket. This again. is a losing ticket. So this is a worthless ticket. All right, now let me show you something really interesting. Let's go to a different window this time. Go, go, go to one further up. Right. Hang on, hang on. Remember what I said. Look her right in the eye. Right in the eye. This is a winning ticket. Okay? This is the dog you're looking for. That's why we came to this window. Thank you. Fantastic. It's easy to misread them sometimes. Can, can, I, can I just check something with you? It says there that uh, mistakes can't be rectified after we've left the window. Yeah. yeah. Can I just ask you, what, which dog won again on that one? What was the number, the correct number for the, the dog that won? Number four. Four, great. Right, so the ticket I just gave you was number... One. One, which you've just paid out on winning. What are you doing there? What's just happened? <laughs> you told her to pay out. So the machine told you to pay out. No. One minute it won, next minute it didn't. It was horrible, actually. It was like, my God, what have I done? You know, I'm giving out money to everybody. Buy yourself a drink on us. Uh, OK. Thanks for that. Thanks very much. There you go, mate. Thank you. There we go. You've done very well. Thank you for your Thank time you and much. for your trust. Very profitable. Uh, Excellent. And uh, will we see you it's again? It's a rush, isn't it? It's true. Yeah, yeah, will we see you again the next meeting? Um... Oh yeah, I'm back in next week. <laughs> we won tonight, £160. I'm losing tickets. And all I can say is thank you to Darren and thank you Wolfenstein. Great track. It is scary to think that someone can pick, pick a lie up there quickly. So I don't know. I don't know how people know that. How do you know that, these people? Do you know what I, mean? I don't know how you know that. I don't know. 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, 100. Wow. <laughs> Can't believe you got it right. It's just like he's read my mind or something like that. 
Now, for heaven's sake, go to bed. Don't worry about how it was done. Just go straight to bed, leave the washing up, and get into bed fully clothed. If any of you want to know how any of it was done, please feel free to write in to me at my home address, which will come up on the screen in a moment, and I will give you a full and honest explanation of anything you may ask. Good night and sweet dreams. Well, I'm afraid I don't have that home address to hand, but you might find something.